Hello, this is KC from KC Boomer Tech. We talk about everything tech and other stuff related to boomers. If you're like me, I'm a little overweight, and I started decided to get on a diet and start trying to get healthy. And while I was in the supermarket, I picked up a magazine. You've all seen these type of magazines. And I was reading through it. And when I read what they were saying, I got very, very frustrated because a lot of the content information was incorrect. So I'm going to get into it right now, and we'll talk about it. So as I was saying, recently I got diagnosed with diabetes, so I have to be very careful with my sugar intake. And so I've gotten on a diet, I'm going to the gym, and I'm going and doing everything that I could possibly do. But then I reached, like I said, I reached a magazine like this, and I began reading through it, and, you know, some of the things are very, articles are very good, and some of the articles are recommending certain foods that aren't good for a diabetic or any person just to be for fact you know again looking at different help you know various foods let's see if i can catch this for you you know but then the amount of sugar in it is rather rather high so i said that annoyed me to the point of ridiculousness so i'm going to go over the 10 foods that you should not have in your cupboard Let's start with low-fat sandwich breads, like margarine, okay, or, you know, mayonnaise, or anything that is low-fat. When you take the fat out, you have to replace it with something else. Your body knows what to do with fat. In fact, fat is very important because if you, you can't absorb your certain, you can't absorb certain fat-soluble vitamins without them. Not only that, but a lot of th these spreads, you know, contain trans fats. Margarine, is a, for an example, was originally fed to pigs to fatten them up. But it, the pig step kept dropping dead from heart attacks. So they relabeled it, changed the coloring, changed the flavoring, and renamed it margarine. Not good for you. Stay with butter stay with the good foods that you'll be healthier to go and really make it another one is those low-fat cereal bars okay a lot of them have no very little and no protein in them okay and not only that but they contain as much as 13 grams of sugar sugar is the major cause of heart attacks how is that possible as when you have too much sugar in your bloodstream, the sugar scrapes up against the blood vessels in your body, causing them to be cut. And your body uses cholesterol to maintain and repair those cuts. Well, when you start putting cholesterol in the body and you're covering your arteries and your veins with this cholesterol, which, are, which starts to build up, why? Because as the sugar crystals are coming by and cutting the your veins and arteries and capillaries, they eventually get clogged up with it. And then you'd end up having a heart attack. So what's your solution? Stay away from low-fat items. Stay with regular foods. You know, oh, oh, you know, every diabetic, oh, I can't eat, I can't eat, so I'll have low-fat cookies. Wait a minute. If you take out the fat, what did you put in its place? Well, average, the average uh, low-fat cookie has almost 15 grams of sugar. Okay, that's a lot of sugar for one little cookie. You better having the, rather have the regular cookie. If you're going to have a cookie, have a cookie. But don't have the low-fat one. Let me go on to another one. And that is your low-fat muffins. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to have that. I want to have that muffin in the morning, but I really don't feel, you know, like, you know, I, I want to try to cut calories. I want to do this. I want to do that. So I get myself a low-fat muffin. Nice blueberry one, you know. But it contains 19 grams of sugar, where the regular muffin has only 4 grams of sugar. Am I getting through to you now? You really want to stay away from... Anything that's low fat. 
let's talk about low-fat yogurt. Regular yogurt's good for you. It contains the enzymes that helps your digestive system. It contains a lot of great things. But lo when you take the fat out of the yogurt, you got to put, like I said, you got to put something back inside, you know. And 100 grams of non-fat frozen yogurt contains 24 grams of sugar. It's 3.5, little tiny 3.5 ounce little yogurt stick, and it's got more sugar than that. <clears throat> By the way, if I didn't tell you, um, a gram is equal to two teaspoons. So if you're taking uh, 24 grams of 24 grams, that's two, two, that's 48 teaspoons of sugar. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do that. So you want to stay again from low fat, low fat frozen yogurt. Now let's talk about peanut butter. Peanut butter we know is good for you, but people say, "Oh, I want to reduce the fat. I want to reduce the fat." Again, if you take the fat out, what's going to happen you gotta put something in its place so what are they putting they're putting vegetable oil and vegetable oil <coughs> is not good for you as for the oil in peanut butter peanut butter oil is monosaturated that means it's good for you <coughs> pardon me again so what does that mean that a reduced fat has 190 more calories than a regular tablespoon of peanut butter. Which leads us to what got me really angry when I was reading the magazine was they were recommending low-fat flavored yogurt. Well, let me tell you something. Regular yogurt, plain yogurt, can help you with weight loss and, can, and improves your body composition by increasing the levels of fullness hormones that help you feel full. But low-fat flavored yogurt does just the opposite. They put they replace the fat with, you got it, sugar. And you know what sugar does to your body? I already told you that. It tears apart your arteries, tears apart your veins, and leads to diabetes. For example, an 8-ounce, 240-gram fruit-flavored, non-fat non yogurt contains get this now, 47 grams of sugar. That's nearly 12 teaspoons, okay? In comparison, a equivalent serving of chocolate pudding has 38 grams of sugar. So, hey, you know what? I think I'd rather have the regular yogurt, you know, put a little piece, nice fresh fruit in there. And if I'm going to have it some dessert... I'm going to have the chocolate pudding because it's healthier for me in comparison. Now, how many of you love are in the supermarket and you see that low-fat flavored coffee drinks and you say, oh, I got to have that one, right? I was, you know, that's been one of my major downfalls. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got to have that on the way out. Well, guess what? Coffee is one of the healthiest beverages for you. Okay, it contains antioxidants, and it protect and it and it actually has a help to help decrease diabetes. Ca uh, coffee also contains caffeine, which can increase your mental performance and your physical performance in the gym. But when you t replace it uh, with low fat now you have a situation and that situation is very simple for example a 16 ounce non-fat mocha drink has only two grams of fat but a whopping 33 grams of sugar that's 40 57 percent of the calories and you know what i told you it is not healthy not only that but a lot of these will add fructose to it so now you've got fructose, you've got sugar, and that gets into your bloodstream. And, you know, we know it's tearing your body apart. And if you, have, and if you don't, want to, don't want to be a diabetic or if you're a diabetic, you've got to stay away from this stuff. Now the last food, and I've given you these in no particular order, 
is low fat sweetened breakfast cereal. Okay. Everybody's going, oh, you know, it's low fat, it's for, it's fortified with vitamins and minerals, and uh, you know, it contains whole grains. It's good for me. It ain't any good for you. That type of cereal contained 25% of that cereal is sugar. 25%, okay? And it's it's not just made with white table sugar, but it's made with high fructose corn syrup and honey. I mean, we're talking about you're diabetic. You're just asking to, to, to have an extra shot of insulin. And if you're not using insulin, you're going to be getting some zoom. So... I hope this has been useful. This is my rant and rave. I, I just got so angry when I saw that magazine and th what they were recommending in foods. Again, I put up on the screen, you can see the 10 foods that you should avoid if you want to live longer. Go back to the natural foods. Go back to the uh, yogurt and whole. Go back to your coffee, you know, but don't have it with that sugar and stuff and that garbage. And this way, you'll be living longer you'll be a boomer in your 90s and being able to run around the 20 year olds so listen until next time i thank you for watching please share like and subscribe to the channel and have a great evening huh